you are clicking on this video, that means you are wondering on what questions to ask on the open day evening of sixth form or college. Hello, so if you don't know me, my name is Victoria. I run the channel It's Highlands Diary, which is here. And I'm going to give you about 20 questions and things to consider about the sixth form slash college that you want to go to on the open day evening. So let's get started. <laughs> first things first, the environment. Is it safe? Um, are there a lot of murders around? Obviously nowhere is 100% safe, but I feel like the environment and the area it is in makes the experience much better. Because, of course, you know, there's less danger, but like I said, nowhere is 100% safe. But it's just something to think about. Number two. Your subject's qualifications and exam boards. Sure, you can do your subject, but is it an A-level or is it B-tech or something else? Because obviously, you'll enjoy the subjects, but you might not enjoy the topics. So it's just something to ask if you're doing history or English. Three, the facilities. Now we're talking about how large the libraries are with how many books and how many computers. Are there lifts for people who aren't able to walk up the stairs as efficiently and as well as others? Do they have a very hygienic water fountain? How do you pay for school meals? Things like that are very important. Even the toilets, oh my gosh. I remember my sister took me to this one open day evening and she was like, the toilets are really good. Tick. I was like, wait, what? why the toilets? You know, because you're not going to study in there, are you? No, but it's just, you want the environment and the facilities as well as possible so that the experience of college slash sixth form is way better. Especially if you're going to a performing arts school or a STEM-based school. You know, do they have a lot of science labs? How are the music rooms? Are the drums new? Or they do they still have, like, broken drumsticks? Yeah, those facilities can be there, but if you don't keep a close eye on them on open day, then... Oof. Number four, the commute. Now, personally, I take about one hour and ten minutes to get to school, max. Least is probably about 40 minutes. So you need to think about it. Do you want to travel a long distance? Do you want to go to somewhere closer? You also need to think about travel money, which goes into my next point, bursary. Number five, bursary. How much money are you given? to travel to pay for books if you aren't able to. Does the school offer free school meals if you're eligible for it? How often do you get the bursaries? Is it every half term or every term? Number six, the school timetable. How long are the lessons? Um, are they double periods? Are they single? Do you have free period study periods? Something that is worth asking. Number seven, school meals now. We're touching this topic again. What if you're vegan or you're vegetarian? You, you know, hello. Dietary requirements like that. Does the school offer that? Number eight, your subject requirements. And do they offer AS levels? Now, most sixth forms that I know if you are a high achiever, they normally ask you to maybe choose four at the beginning and then drop one at the end of year 12, unless you just want to stick with three for the two years. Then you might leave with three A levels and a one AS level. Some schools, they say, no, we do not offer AS levels. So therefore, you have to do either three A levels or four at the end of year 13. Number nine. Now, if you're falling behind, let's say, further maths, what are they going to offer you for help? Are they going to give you group tutoring or one-to-one -one tutoring or maybe 
uh, websites that they suggest or extra books. This is very vital, something that's so vital to ask because they want you to get the best A-levels for yourself and for the school themselves. Number 10. Link to universities and apprenticeships. Schools that have been around much longer will have much more links to universities, apprenticeships, uh, work experiences. So it is a good idea to be asking the head teacher or their deputy head teacher or just any teachers, you know, what links does a school have and how will it affect my subjects? So for example, I do music. Does this school offer uh, work experiences with the Royal Academy of Music or something like that? It's something that you should really ask because you at the end of year 13 will have more on your UCAS and it will be much easier for you to find schools because there's already connections. 11! <laughs> oh, that was so bad. Oh my god. Clubs! What clubs does your school offer? Hmm, do they offer orchestra, IT club, crafts club, cooking club? And if they don't have the club that you want to join, how many people do you need to create your own club? You know, because it is very attractive on your UCAS if you say, because my school didn't offer this club, I started my own club this many people came to my club and it was very effective as I met a lot of people and blah 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 you just blab on you know number 12 <gasps> um SEN um what what support will they offer for children who need a bit more help in class do they have more teachers in class? Do they take you out of class maybe? Or do they tutor you or give you some questions after class? Number 13. <laughs> um, if you need extra time because you had some extra time or you will have extra time in GCSEs, will you be in the same room as everybody else when you're doing your year 13 exams? Or will you be separated from everybody else. I think that's quite important to ask. Number 14, class sizes. Now, in my school, English, maths, biology, they're quite popular. So we probably have about 60 to 70 people. Are they going to have one class for history? <laughs> um, are they gonna have just one class with everybody together? Or will they have multiple classes? So for example, in English we have three classes, so there's probably about 60 of us. So max, there's 20, minimum 14, I don't know. It is beneficial for you because it means that uh, you will get more support and there's more one-to-one -one interaction between you and your teacher if you have less students in your class. However, two little students might mean that you don't do the subject as, as at all because there's two little students. I know that there's a sixth form right next to me and they say, if there's not even five students in uh, music, we're cutting music out of that year group. And you're like, oh, but like, that means we need to change our subjects. Things like that can happen. Better to ask than be sorry. Number 15. My subjects. Hmm. Where will they lead me to? I think that's a basic question. You just ask the, sub the subject leader and they'll tell you like, oh, um, for example, sociology or psychology. It can go into anthropology, you know. Basic question. <laughs> Number 16. Um... If you do want to do four A-levels, what are the grade requirements? Do you need to have a GPA over 7.45, 7.9, and 9 maybe? <laughs> or do you just need enough 7s, enough 8s, and enough 9s? 
something worth asking. Number 17, 17, yeah. <laughs> um, trips and visitors and workshops. How often are these workshops? How often are these trips? How often do uh, very well-educated people come into your school and give you advice and support and so on? How often that does that happen? This links to the the connections to universities, works, works experience and apprenticeships. Very basic. Number 18. What is a school uniform like? Do you have a dress code? Do you have to dress smart? Or you can wear smart casual? Or casual but not too casual? Something to ask. Again. Number 19. There we go. 19. Um, if you want to change your subjects, how often can you change them in the first month? There could be a limit to how many times you change your subjects. Maybe six or four. Something something to ask again. And lastly, number 20. Or 20, 20. I'm going to do this side. 20. How will your school help you write your UCAS CV? I think that's what it is. How will they enhance your CVs? How will they enhance your personal statements? How will they basically make sure that the school is from like good to excellent? I think it's great to ask how the school will offer um, support, advice on careers, your UCAS, personal statements, CVs, all of that jazz. So we have gotten to the end of this video. Thank God it's over. Oh my gosh. My personal experience, I only went to one. Oh my God. I went to one open day evening and I didn't go to that school. I didn't even go to my six forms induction day, which is very important actually. I didn't check. I didn't. I was like, oh, I'm too lazy. And now I'm here. <laughs> I'm suffering. I'm not. Sort of. Yeah, that's the end of the video. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. I really hope this was extremely helpful to those who are just so shook on their first open day evening. Like, you don't know what to expect. So, I hope these are just some sparks of conversations that you can have at the open day evenings. And that's it, yeah. I'll see you next time. Bye!